And I am going to Good morning. It is um, Sunday, November 12th. We are so happy to welcome Jim Kenny to Macomb Solel Lakeside. I did say this man needs no introduction, which of course never stops me from giving the introduction. Jim has been recognized for decades. That ages you, Jim. Um, as a leader in the global movement for intercultural understanding, working to promote harmony and cooperative action among the world's religious communities. He had a major role in the two largest interreligious gatherings ever held, the 1993 and 1999 Parliaments of World Religions, Chicago and Cape Town. He was global director of the parliament from 1995 to, to 2002. And in 2002, he founded the Interreligious Engagement Project, helping global interreligious communities address critical planetary issues. He's the co-founder and executive director of Common Ground. Um, for over 30 years, Jim has lectured widely on political, social, religious, and cultural issues. Over the past decade, his research and writing have focused on cultural evolution, how human societies adapt, sometimes dramatically, to a changing world. Thriving in the cross currents is the pinnacle of his work. Um, here's hoping we're in a sea change, S-E-A, um, of the kind Jim Kenny describes. Um, you know, missing from his biography is that uh, he's really spoken almost every year. I want to say at least for the last 20, maybe 25 years um, to our community. We're so glad to have him today and we can't wait to hear what he has to um, what he has to say. Fair enough. I'm just going to go ahead and share the screen. I'm going to do this for an hour and 10 or 15 and then we'll break for for questions. I hope that works for everybody because I'm going to do it anyway. This, this takes a moment. And you'll mute everybody, Vanessa, right? Yes. Yeah, everybody's muted except for me, and I will eventually mute myself as well. <laughs> <laughs> we can see. Oh, there it is. Trust the plan. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure I called this Trust the Plan, the rise of QAnon and the conspiracy that unhinged America. Actually, I should have that in italics because I've uh, stolen it. Uh, wait a minute, I got to get rid of some stuff that's blocking the screen here. Uh, I, I borrowed this uh, from a really terrific book of exactly the same name and subtitle, Trust the Plan, uh, by a guy who's a, a regular contributor. Actually, you'll meet him in the course of this conversation. I have a little clip or two from him. His name is Will Summer and his book, Trust the Plan. Now, Trust the Plan uh, is a, a phrase that's associated with the group that we're going to talk or the movement we're going to talk about today. It's a very loose uh, and kind of amorphous movement uh, that's called QAnon, QAnon, Q Anonymous. I'll just tell you right now uh, that it all began in October of 2017 with a post to a fairly obscure message board called 4chan, uh, numeral 4-C-H-A-N. 4 4chan's 4 still around. Uh, eventually, uh, the guy who posted as Q, I'll tell you more about him in a minute, uh, moved to a different message board, and I'm also going to tell you about message boards very quickly, called 8chan. That's all you need to know about that. But back in the early days of the internet, uh, before we had uh, browsers that were so easy for us all to use, like Mosaic, and then Netscape came along, and Internet Explorer, and Safari, and Firefox, and whatever you use today, uh, but your browser uh, gets rid of all of the uh, of all of the code that's actually there. I mean, you don't have to deal with the code uh, if you want to go to a particular website or you want to zero in on a particular uh, uh, article or whatever it happens to be. That's all done for you with icons and 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 uh, hyperlinks and that sort of thing. But back in the day, there were message boards, uh, and a message board uh, was a place where one could post. Uh, I got to get rid of this again. It popped up every time somebody comes in, uh, uh, where one could post uh, oh, just a, a line or two or a paragraph of text. Eventually, a message board called 4chan came along, and they had expanded the flexibility of the site so you could now post images and photos 
Well, you know what happened to 4chan. It became the go-to place for internet pornography. Uh, and it had it had some constraints, some limits. There were certain things you couldn't post. So another guy came along. And if we had weeks and weeks to talk about this, I'd identify all these characters for you. They're all fascinating in their own right. But another guy came along and said, we need a message board that doesn't have all the rules and strictures where you can post anything you want. And we're going to call that 8chan. Well, OK, that's enough background. Uh, someone who identified himself as Q, remember I said it all begins in October 2017, Identi identified himself with the letter Q, claimed to have a top secret government security clearance, and uh, claimed also that he was uh, in on, understood about uh, the, the machinations of what he called the deep state. Now, the deep state, you know, is a, is a term that's constantly used by MAGA world and Donald Trump. And what it refers to is the is the whole infrastructure of bureaucrats that are always in place as presidents and administrations come and go. So you might from time to time elect a Republican president, but the infrastructure is all left wing Democrats uh, who are deeply ensconced and embedded in every agency of government. And they constitute the deep state. They hate everything that Republican presidents stand for. They especially hate everything that Donald Trump stands for. I'm tempted to say who doesn't. But uh, of course, I, I have no political axe to grind here. Just wait. Uh, Anyway, uh, the deep state uh, is uh, out to subvert the very principles on which our, our culture, our democracy, our republic is founded, and they're at it constantly. But it turns out we only know the half of it. The deep state is much more toxic, much more poisonous, much more starkly evil than even that would account for. And Q was going to tell us all about it. Well, who is Q? Uh, if we had all the time in the world, I would say uh, that today we have a pretty good idea who Q was. And we think that Q in about 2020 uh, withdrew from the game, stopped posting uh, after 5,000 posts, 5,000 cryptic messages on 4chan and 8chan uh, that purported to unlock the secrets of the deep state. We'll get into that. Uh, and uh, moved to 8chan, and at that point of the transfer, apparently the old Q was replaced by a new Q. We have a pretty good uh, idea of who that is. Linguistic experts have parsed and analyzed the text. You know, they're very good at this. And they say, these two Qs are not the same Qs, and this one seems to be to speak in the language and with the tongue of that guy, and this belongs to that guy. Now, uh, because we're not going to get into it that deeply, we don't care. Uh, who they are. But let me go back and say, what's a Q? What's what's about Q? He said uh, that he had a, a very high government security clearance. Turns out there is a Q level clearance. And it belongs to the energy department of all things. Uh, Q level clearance is one of the highest uh, clearances in the energy department. So the idea is that this guy is in on what really goes on in government uh, and that he is here to disclose it to us. But the movement is called QAnon. So one more thing I have to say before we get uh, moving uh, to some more colorful slides than this one, which is admittedly quite boring, uh, is the difference between Q, who's posting these cryptic messages that somehow offer the clues you need uh, to begin to penetrate and analyze and understand uh, what this deep state and its representatives, its actors, uh, its embodiments are all about. But in order to be a QAnon, an anonymous follower of Q, you have to be willing to do some work because most of these clues and cues are not simple. They're eventually called Q drops. 5,000 Q drops will drop. Uh, and some of them are cryptic indeed. Uh, some are, are moderately cryptic, like uh, why is, uh, uh, what's the role of the military with Trump? Questions like that. Uh, but others are absolutely uh, bizarre sequences of letters and numbers and so on. Well, uh, the QAnon people love it. 
and they love the game that they have begun and that they've gotten into. And there are naturally some Q influencers who have big websites and huge followings uh, who analyze and, as I said before, parse and, and archive and record and, and explain uh, all of these mysterious drops. Now, remember, the drops stopped dropping uh, in uh, uh, December of 2020, and then they start again. But by the time they start again, nobody cares. Uh, because QAnon is off and running on its own. One more little step into the woods here. I will tell you that QAnon, uh, which began as a, a, as a movement all about conspiracies, this is what the deep state is up to, and I will tell you the core conspiracy, and it's horrifying. Uh, stay tuned. But eventually, and by the time we're speaking today, QAnon, which is still up and vital and running, even though Q has, has uh, sort of misted away, uh, uh, QAnon has become the uh, this movement has become the repository for every contra or every conspiracy theory you ever heard of. Maybe it's Marilyn Monroe back in the day. Maybe it's the theory, and in fact, this is is one that they've been circulating lately. Uh, remember the old idea that Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill knew uh, that the Japanese fleet was steaming toward Pearl Harbor, but in order to get the United States to overcome its isolationism and enter the war, they let the attack go ahead with a whole American fleet sitting there in, in the Pearl Harbor base, unlikely and completely discredited and bonkers. Uh, but nevertheless, there have been people for um, decades that believe that stuff. And now it has found another home in Q, as has all the Mar Marilyn Monroe stuff. And every conspiracy theory you ever heard has come home to roost uh, in this nut house. OK, I know I'm mixing metaphors. And there's my current favorite graphic or one of them. This is the motto of QAnon today. Where we go one, we go all. And this simply appeared on an early post by this fellow Q, uh, an early one line post. And it said, where we go one, we go all. Now it's abbreviated and you'll see it written as WWG numeral one WGA, where we go one, we go all. And it has become the motto of the group. You may uh, recognize the flag. This is a variation on the famous Gadsden flag, which was a Revolutionary War flag uh, that looked actually like this. This is the Gadsden flag, and it was a no tread on, don't tread on me flag. You may recall that in 2009, with uh, the Tea Party movement, uh, this flag was resurrected, and it became uh, essentially the uh, the emblem of the Tea Party movement. Now, in this reiteration, it's the emblem of QAnon, or one of them. And on January 6th, uh, as the rioters were uh, taking the Capitol building, you saw this flag absolutely everywhere. All the organizers, I'll tell you that and I'll tell you again, all the major organizers, the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers, uh, who actually did the planning and orchestrated the January 6th attack, who are all now uh, in, uh, about to serve very lengthy sentences, uh, every one of them was heavily involved in QAnon. Once again, I have to try to get rid of, you don't see it, but I do. You probably see it as a black square up at the top. Anyway, uh, QAnon in a nutshell, one is tempted to say, and that's precisely where it belongs. Uh, the core idea is that it's an all-encompassing, as I said here, notion of global power. Global power, the real power, and always conspiracy theories, don't they? They always point to some little group that controls everything. In this case, it's the deep state. By the way, I'm going to tell you that uh, before too long in these posts, uh, Q uh, stopped referring to the deep state, although the deep state still came up. And he started using, no surprise, you, this won't surprise you at all, started using the term cabal. Uh, and the cabal, to throw cabal into the conversation is like throwing Mecca into the conversation. I, I'm always stunned when I hear some place referred to as a hamburger Mecca, right? Uh, completely inappropriate in both cases. But cabal, of course, from Kabbalah and the idea of, you know, it's always been associated to, with sinister Jewish conspiracies uh, on the order of the protocols. 
Anyway, who's behind all this? The Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas, bankers. That's, of course, the code word there. Uh, the Vatican, just to balance. So it's not just Jews, it's Catholics, too. And in the United States, I'll just tell you that there's a long history of uh, of conspiracy theories that target Jews and Catholics. There was a movement uh, in about the oh, 1840s, 1850s, a political party that was called the American Party, but everybody knew them as the know-nothings because they were very secretive and uh, members were sworn if they were asked or interrogated about their party to just say, we know nothing. And so they came to be called the Know Nothing Party. They were a nativist party. Foreigners go home. Uh, stop immigration. Most of them, interestingly enough, were of German extraction, and most of them just uh, half a generation or a generation off the boat. Uh, but it's not uncommon uh, for a community that is uh, has recently uh, immigrated into the country to want to close the gates behind them and to say, okay, the Germans are in, now stop the Irish. Uh, so that was the Know Nothing movement. Uh, and they believed that the world was controlled by a conspiracy of Jews, Catholics, and Muslims. I've been talking about this for years, and I've always been saying, I wish I could be a fly on the wall and listen in to a meeting of Jewish, Catholic, and, and I said Muslims, I meant Masons, uh, conspirators. I'd love to know what they talked about, how they, how they worked together, and what they planned. <laughs> for the world. Anyway, the CIA is in it, so is NSA, so is FBI, and Democrat control of global sex trafficking and drugs and, and gangs, and a miracle drug more powerful than heroin, if that's the kind of drug you're looking for, or more powerful than LSD, if that's what you want, but it's also a fountain of youth drug. A fountain of youth drug keeps you young and vital, prolongs your life. And every Democrat and Hollywood star and, and members of, of the global banking conspiracy, all these people from George Soros to Hillary Clinton to Tom Hanks, interestingly enough, has been singled out as the go-to person for the, uh, for the uh, big uh, deep state uh, or the cabal uh, in Hollywood. And they all take adrenochrome. Adrenochrome is supposedly uh, extract, let me just tell you right now, there is a substance called adrenochrome. Uh, in the 50s, uh, there was some experimentation with it. It was believed it might hold some key to help unlock schizophrenia. That turned out to be a dry well, didn't pan out. It's used in some countries as a clotting agent and so on. But in the United States, it has no recognized medical use whatsoever. And it's very simple to make. You just take ad adrenaline, epinephrine and expose it to oxygen and adrenochrome is the result. Very simple, cheap to make. But the story is, the QAnon story, is that adrenochrome needs to be extracted from the pineal glands of children who are undergoing torture. That's the only place to get it. Uh, so the Democrats, and notice the use of that term Democrat, we don't say Democratic Party, we say the Democrat Party, if we're right-wingers. It's just a dismissive uh, smear that has become de rigueur in those circles. Uh, but it, Democrats control the global traffic in adrenochrome, now, or adrenochrome. This is, we're getting close to the nutshell, or I mean, the, the nugget, whatever, I don't know, I'm out of metaphors, uh, that makes this movement tick. But here's, here's the real point of it all. Uh, Q provided a steady, I'm just going to read this, a steady drip of cryptic clues to the secrets of the deep state and Donald Trump's brave battle against it. The plan that we talked about at the beginning, trust the plan. There is a plan. The plan is that as although it looks like the world is doomed, Democrats and evil people and this vast deep state, which controls not only the United States, but the world, uh, it's awful, it's horrible, it's terrifying, but fear not, because the forces of good are arrayed against it, led by none other than Donald Trump. So Donald Trump, who is christened, if you will, by Jesus to carry the torch or the cross or whatever you want to battle against these uh, these evil forces. And the evil forces we're talking about, guess who they work for? The conspiracy is satanic. So it's Satan and Hillary Clinton and, and Satan's minions versus Jesus and Donald Trump. Uh, and Q is there to recruit an army of supporters by meeting out a steady drip 
of clues that those who care enough about it will be able to put together, weave the, the whole narrative, and then archive it and share it and advance it and so on. Uh, it's interesting because uh, it's pretty apparent that the, this uh, the the origin of this goofiness on on 4chan came out of the gamer community, came out of people who uh, played and designed video games, and there was an, a, a, a big controversy in 2014 uh, when uh, the the gamer community it was called GamerGate, and the gamer community dominated by uh, I'll just be honest here. It's dominated by young males who mostly spend time in their parents' basements uh, uh, playing and designing video games. Uh, now, some of these have become fabulously wealthy. I think they're still largely basement dwellers. Uh, and uh, the Gamergate essentially had to do with the fact that uh, a woman uh, named Joey Quinn uh, became the first successful female game designer. Well, this community of of rabid misogynistic, as I keep saying, basement dwellers, just rose in fury, because if women once got a foothold in the business of game design, everything would be lost. the The richness of combat and and the male uh, testosterone dominated world, blah blah blah, uh, would be would be weakened and poisoned and so on. We'd have soft things and people would be talking about their feelings and who knows what. And so they attacked Joey Quinn. They recruited her boyfriend to say that the only reason she got that contract was because she slept with the reviewer from the New York Times that gave her a good review and uh, and so on. Uh, and then they moved on to attack every other female that had a, a foothold uh, in game design and they drove them out. Uh, they drove them out in some uh, with death threats, rape threats, and also with what are called SWAT attacks. That's when you call the police and you give them a report that results in a SWAT team being sent to the house of the person you're targeting targeting also doxing which means putting all the all the uh, pertinent data and private data of someone up on the web and inviting people to attack these women uh, uh suffered uh, enormous trauma well there's really good evidence that suggests that that pipeline uh which uh, has a strong strong right wing character which is dominated by people who like to call themselves incels you may have heard that term incel involuntary celibate involuntary celibate i'm celibate i don't want to be but i'm celibate because women are so horrible uh interestingly enough or horribly enough if you will a number of the recent mass shooters have been including the guy uh, creepo in highland park have been self-identified incels right straight out of that toxic uh right-wing crazy world that produced QAnon. okay but thank god for donald trump so here we have q and where we go one we go all so I wanted to, I'm going to try to remove this thing again from the top that you don't even see. Uh, I wanted to offer you a little bit of an analysis of, of what makes this whole culture tick. And I think this is reasonable. What is the QAnon allure where we go one and so on? And there's our little rabbit hole. Uh, I think there are three drivers, three principal drivers, and one is cultural confusion. And we live in a time, no question about it, of cultural confusion. I think it results from the fact that we're actually undergoing a very progressive sh shift in values. We're moving toward a, a, a time when more and more people accept ideas of social justice and human rights and uh, uh, patriarchy is weakening racism, uh, even though there's some virulent racists around racism as a legitimate way of looking at the world is has seen the bottom drop out of it. So that produces uh, enormous energy for those who, who want to make the, the world a better place, but it also produces complete disorientation and confusion for the group that I would call the lost. Now, the reason this is one of the drivers if you is that if you didn't have that great army of the culturally confused, you wouldn't have a recruitment pool for QAnon. But you also need the activists, the angry ones. And those are the ones who are completely in the throes of identity crisis. Imagine the poor incel uh, who has his very masculinity challenged by the toxic attitudes of women. 
Uh, he's a, a perfectly good, perfectly attractive guy, but they don't see it uh, and they reject him. He's an involuntary celibate. That kind of identity crisis, maybe you're threatened on the basis of your religion. Suddenly there are other religions that you're supposed to respect and pay attention to. Suddenly uh, you're supposed to honor women. Suddenly uh, being white is not your ticket uh, uh, to ride any longer. And so you find all of that very threatening. Identity crisis of those sorts, uh, which come as part and parcel of cultural evolution, you know, eventually we would get over the idea that that whiteness is somehow superior, that maleness is superior, uh, and or that there's only one true religion in the world. Gradually, we get over those things, and the people that are locked into, let's say it, white male Christianity, find their world challenged and crumbling and that makes them very angry. And I think the foot soldiers of, of QAnon and so on tend to fall in this category. And we'd be naive if we didn't uh, uh, allow the possibility uh, that there's some oligarchic uh, energy uh, directed into this whole thing. Would it, would it suit the purposes of the fabulously wealthy and powerful who uh, are looking to expand? Uh, and consolidate their wealth and power, would it occasionally suit their purposes to fan the flames or stoke the fires, if you will, of this kind of, of conspiracy nonsense in, other, in order to uh, uh, generate the sort of support for their positions uh, and the voter support uh, that they need? Uh, this whole thing, I got to tell you, the whole QAnon thing skews madly to the right. Uh, and if it produces an electoral uh, uh, energy or an electoral result, it's it's Trumpist in every regard. So if those are the drivers, what are the themes? And just very quickly, I think number one is anti-science. Every major conspiracy theory that ever was, as far as I'm concerned, has some kind of core of anti-science, anti-evolution, by the way, let me just interrupt myself. Uh, xenophobia, of course, fear and hatred of the other, and conspiracism, the idea that the world is somehow controlled or driven uh, by, by hateful groups uh, that exercise power out of proportion to, uh, to what they ought. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, I just wanted to say that our new uh, Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, has nothing to do with QAnon, but he ticks every single QAnon box every single one. He is a young earth creationist. That means he believes that the, the earth is 6,000 years tops, 6,000 years old tops. Uh, he had his suspicions about the virus, about COVID, about masking, about vaccinations. Uh, he is, although uh, he and his wife adopted a, a black son when they were younger, uh, uh, he's absolutely opposed to uh, any effort uh, to make the world safer for people of color. He's opposed to that. He often uses incel slang to talk about what what uh, troubles us uh, in our sexual lives, he talks about sexual anarchy. You can just think about that word, sexual anarchy. All the old rules, which are patriarchal rules, are breaking down and so on. That sexual anarchy is the go-to fear of the incel world. Anyway, you get the idea. So Mike Johnson ticks the boxes. Uh, anyway, you get what I'm after here. And I'm not going to indulge this one. Instead, I'm going to take you uh, ahead uh, to look at what I call the QAnon compass. And we'll zip through this, but just to give you a flavor, actually, I won't be able to completely zip, you know me. So at the top, instead of the deep state, I've changed that to cabal. At the bottom, Donald Trump. So here's the way this little compass of mine works. At the top, we have the concentration of things that are to be feared, the evil, the cabal. At the bottom, the sources of hope led by Donald Trump, Donald Trump and Jesus. So the cabal, Democrats, absolutely. They are pedophiles. Remember what I said about the drug of choice, adrenochrome, being extracted from the pineal glands of children who are undergoing torture. What kind of torture do you suppose it is? Well, of course, it's satanic. But the good news is that the storm is coming. The storm is the moment, QAnoners believe, when Donald Trump comes forward and announces uh, that uh, in his role as president, so for some of them, since he's not president anymore, uh, the storm begins with Donald Trump reassuming his rightful place in the White House. By election, 
perhaps, but not necessary. Maybe it's just uh, uh, by, by force of the will of the people. Anyway, the storm is the announcement of the arrest, incarceration at Guantanamo, public trials, and public execution of all of those who have been uh, uh, who have been in charge of this global sex trade in children, satanic global sex trade in children for the purpose of extracting the wonder drug that keeps them all young. Let me just pause and say, if adrenochrome really does, if it's the, the fountain of youth, why don't the Democrats as a group look better? I'm just asking. Okay, and then there's the Great Awakening. The storm is when we round up the, the miscreants. The Great Awakening is when all of the rest of the world goes, oh, the QAnoners were right. And every conspiracy theory that ever was, every group of conspiracists, they all anticipate that day when everyone knows that they were right all along. I often say, and I may say, I'm not I don't remember on a slide here in this presentation, but I think what really makes this whole thing tick at the deepest psychological level is uh, a, a one, one phrase, I know something you don't know. And there's a tremendous power in knowing something that all these people who are so smart and so uh, who lord it over me all the time, but I know something they don't even begin to suspect. And that makes me, uh, you know, well, this began in a way, the first uh, instantiation of this was had to do with a, a little dive, a little restaurant, supposed to be very good in Washington, D.C. It's called Comet Ping Pong, actually, because they got about 12 ping pong tables, but they have fabulous pizza. Comet Pink Pizza or Comet Ping Pong came to the attention of John Podesta when he was in the White House uh, and before he became um, campaign manager for Hillary Clinton. Uh, and apparently Podesta fell in love with Comet Ping Pong. Well, you remember that the Russians hacked his emails and handed it over to handed them over to Julian Assange, who published them on WikiLeaks, and and it was quite a scandal. Or uh, not much content, but uh, who cares about that? You know, the fact that they were out there uh, and that he talked about strategy and so on seemed uh, condemnatory. But somebody hacked the hack and uh, uh, found the places where apparently Podesta, in the record, uh, is is saying, let's get a pizza from Comet Pizza. Well, they changed uh, on several uh, in several instances they changed the the pizza order that had been in the email uh, from let's order a pizza let's order some girls let's order some young girls transparent and goofy and who would possibly fall for that well it hit the internet and the next thing you know everyone who's part of this uh, strange movement uh, knows the the horrible truth that the global sex trade brace yourselves, the global sex trade is controlled by Hillary Clinton from the basement of Comet Ping Pong. Now, Comet Ping Pong is a little hole in the wall. It doesn't have a basement, but that didn't stop some Yahoo from North Carolina from driving overnight, uh, armed with a shotgun, a couple of automatic rifles and a pistol and going in demanding to see the basement. They said that he didn't ha they didn't have one. So he started shooting the, the locks off doors. Fortunately, he didn't shoot anyone, uh, but uh, shot the place up pretty well. Uh, and uh, he's now resting quietly somewhere. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this hit the hit the news later and he apologized and said i i was misled and so on later he came out uh, and said uh it's still true i just found the wrong pizza place adrenochrome is the drug we're looking for of course the jews are behind it but before you get carried away so is the vatican uh and the pope but you know it's still the jews because one of the things they have uh uh that you encounter all the time in q anon literature is that uh, pope francis is of course a rothschild pope i don't even know what that would mean but you can figure it out i guess 
Dominionism is perhaps the, the most toxic form of Christianity that's out there. Uh, it's very tiny, but it's a, a, a very narrow, very intense, very violent interpretation of Christianity that says, in essence, the father, the man should be the should have dominion, lordship over the family, the family over the neighborhood, the neighborhood over the town, the town over the city, the city over the state, and the state over the nation. And yes, <laughs> wait for it, the nation over the world. That's dominionist Christianity. Jesus will be back soon. And when Jesus come back, comes back, it won't be this meek, forgiving, mild Jesus. He will have fiery eyes and a, a frightening tone, and he will be carrying a bloody sword, which he will set about using. Uh, so this is an angry, violent Jesus. I'll tell you that among the dominionists, the gift of choice for a young man coming of age, 12, 13, you know, confirmation age, uh, the gift of choice is a Confederate officer's sword, which says so much in in such a simple way. By the way, Confederate officer swords of uh, some quality go for about 30 grand. I know that from Antiques Roadshow. And Q drops are these messages from Q. Well, what's the content of the messages? Oh, by the way, Q is the 17th letter of the alphabet. Down here, we have where we go one, we go all. And here are the two message boards where Q first posted and, and, and the second Q posted, 4chan and 8chan. But what's the content? Hillary, George Soros, of course. Barack is involved. Bill Gates is involved. Bill Gates engineered the virus. He engineered the virus so he could engineer the vaccine, and the vaccine carries with it a tiny microtransmitter that apparently uh, can I record, identify, and send out your position, what you're doing, maybe your thoughts. Uh, I, <laughs> it's some uh, tech types have said on a number of occasions that anything that could fit through the needle could not possibly have a power source. Uh, so, you know, you could have an RF idea, radio frequency identification device. They're too big for that. It's, it's a, a joke, a pipe dream, but of course, Bill Gates could engineer it. And so that he's the one that, that gave us COVID. The Masons are always involved in one way or another. They always partner with the Jews and the Catholics. COVID is part of the whole plan. The school shootings, by the way, are false flag events. No school shooting ever took place. The shooting in Lewiston, Maine, 18 people died. No, they didn't. That's just staged. It's staged by whom? By Democrats to discredit the National Rifle Association and to beef up gun laws. Uh, this is something that Alex Jones, the great conspiracist, has been saying and saying and saying again. He was recently, uh, uh, he lost a big lawsuit. Parents of Sandy Hook sued him, of children who died in Sandy Hook, sued him, uh, uh, and they won a judgment of nearly a billion dollars or half a billion dollars. He has no intention of paying it and probably won't. But, uh, but the idea that all these shootings are false flags, they didn't happen. The children you see weeping are crisis actors. That that was a term coined by Alex Jones that's now in circulation. All of these things are fake. Uh, Alex Jones, uh, the military, by the way, is in on it. Uh, and there's there's actually some truth to that. Uh, the QAnon has done very well in certain sec sections of the military, which tends to skew right. Russia and China are also uh, always uh, are also uh, cheering for Donald Trump. Red pilling means uh, uh, you, you red pill someone if you uh, get them to understand, get them to see the truth about about uh, QAnon. Red pill comes from the movie um, The Matrix. If you take the red pill, you'll see uh, what's been foisted on us. Guantanamo uh, will not just be an obscure prison, but will be the center of operations once the storm comes. And guess what? JFK Jr., did not die in a plane crash in 1999 with his wife, Carolyn Bassett. He is alive. He is well. And about a quarter of the QAnoners believe that he will emerge from obscurity to join Donald Trump as his running mate in 2004. So wait for it. I've been using this little clip for a long time. It's one of my favorites, the tinfoil hat brigade. There's Comet pizza 
You see what I mean? It's a hole in the wall and it doesn't have a ba basement, but this is the nerve center of the global sex trade uh, in abducted children. 800,000 children disappear from the United States every year. Not true, but that's what they'll tell you. Sandy hoax. Uh, after the shooting, they tore down the buildings of Sandy Hook. Well, nobody wanted to go back to school there. So they tore it down. Aha, they tore it down before all the evidence had been collected that would have demonstrated that this was fake. And you remember the Challenger disaster? Turns out that the pilot, Michael Smith, is now an engineering professor at the University of Wisconsin. It's just bizarre. Uh, and here, by the way, uh, the, the rover didn't land on Mars. This is a, a scene of, of the Earth. It's an Earth desert, and they just colorized it to make it look like Mars. What? QED. And did you know? that Kamala Harris is actually a man, a Muslim man born in Benghazi in Libya. And there's the proof for you right there. And this is my favorite. This little girl in Leningrad uh, is actually Bill Gates. She grew up to be Bill Gates. I have no idea what the nugget behind this story is, but this one is also all over. This is I Know Something You Don't Know. And here's uh, another wonderful one. Stanley Kubrick's best work was the moon landing. Nobody ever landed on the moon. The whole thing was shot in a soundstage in Houston that masquerades as the vehicle assembly building, but no vehicles are assembled. Uh, it's the soundstage. It's where they shoot all uh, the, the, the space stuff. This is Stephanie Rule. But conspiracy theories like those are everywhere these days. And according to our next guest, our national obsession with conspiracies like QAnon, it's only getting worse. Daily Beast politics reporter Will Summer joins me. He's the author of the terrifying new book, Trust the Plan, The Rise of QAnon and the Conspiracy that Unhinged America. Will, I know you went in disguise to get into this community. So question one, what kind of disguise? Like, were you wearing sure. a goatee, like a Leonard Skinner t-shirt, like two flags hanging out the back of your car? Like, what did it look like? Sure. I mean, nothing too elaborate. Just I, I grew out my facial hair. I, I, I wore a baseball cap, put some sunglasses on, um, you know, because there were people, you know, I'd gotten death threats and, and you know, there was an issue about my safety. Um, you know, I certainly used my own name and identified myself as a reporter, but just to make it a little harder for someone across the room to, to spot me if they wanted to cause trouble. Well, I know you talk to a lot of QAnon believers, enthusiasts. How big of a role does Fox News play in their lives? And how big, um, of, how big of a role does QAnon play in their lives? I mean, Fox is really huge. I mean, you know, we know that, that on the right, and particularly for people who are really addled by right-wing media, Fox News is number one. Um, Fox played a huge role in promoting QAnon. Um, as you showed earlier, that Jesse Waters clip where he says, you know, QAnon, they came up with some great stuff. They, they've uncovered a lot of, re of genuine things. Um, QAnon believers really That's seized on that. To, right, to, to get new recruits. So, uh, you, you know, Fox has really, it, and it, it sort of laid the groundwork in a way by creating other conspiracy theories and, and talking so much about the deep state that then it was only one more jump for people to get into QAnon. People who are into it, though, how big of a role does QAnon have in their daily lives? Are they still going to school, going to work, going to holidays with their families? Yeah, so so a lot of people who are into QAnon, they they go through their normal lives, but they exist in a sort of alternate reality where you know I, I say in the book that they might you, you you might think you're talking to them about the weather, but then they'll say, well, the government controls the weather through all these machines. So they sort of they believe so many bizarre things now. The issue is when that becomes dangerous and, you know, whether that's January 6th or, um, you know, we've had QAnon believers murder members of their own family. So there is that there's that menace to QAnon, even though it can initially seem like just sort of a wacky thing online. How did all of this start? Sure. So it started in October 2017 with some anonymous posts made online by a figure named Q, and so that's where the Q comes from. Uh, and QAnon believers thought that this person was close to Trump, that it was Michael Flynn or Don Jr., perhaps. Um, and they used these clues to sketch out uh, this alternate worldview where Democrats murder children and drink their blood and, and worship the devil. That is so bananas. What was the most shocking thing you learned when you got close to some of these folks? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I think really it was just the the way that it has destroyed families um, really across the country and how these people just really sink into QAnon um, and, and how much money they spend on it. I mean, I, I traveled out to a, a group that's been described as a QAnon cult out in the desert in Arizona after a woman asked me to get her sister out of the group. Um, and, you know, there were guns involved. The FBI was investigating them. Um, and I talked to a guy who said he put $50,000 into this group to promote QAnon of his own money. So it, it is truly a it is both a conspiracy theory and and really harmful thing. But for the people in charge, it's a very lucrative industry. Well, hold on before we go. You just said a woman asked you to get her sister out of the group. That makes it sound like it's a cult. Is that how some people, some some family members who have, quote unquote, lost other family members to QAnon? Is that how they see it? Certainly, that's how they've described it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the, the someone they love comes home and starts talking about QAnon, and then it's like they've been replaced by a different person, and then, you know, their family falls apart in many ways. That's really horrible. That is really, really horrible. We have got to find ways to solve that. I can top that. Um, here's the Kennedy cult. Uh, and it's the it's believed by you know, maybe who knows, but a, a quarter. Uh, that's what Will Summers think. Summer, uh, maybe a quarter of the QAnoners who, by the way, I haven't mentioned this. They number very clearly in the millions. And now they're in Europe as well. Uh, uh, and about a quarter of the group believes that JFK Jr. is alive and and is a big supporter of Trump, is in on the whole thing with Trump. And and of those, most believe that he will emerge in time to declare himself as still alive and uh, and to weather the publicity of all that, and then to uh, stand next to Trump as his running mate in 2024. But there's also a, a group that believes that JFK uh, is or was still alive. Uh, he would be uh, at uh, somewhere around 106 years old, uh, but there is a guy who has been identified. I'll show you a snapshot of him. Uh, uh, he was um, a Medal of Honor winner uh, who was honored by Trump at some sort of uh, event. I've uh, lost track of his name and I, I can't track it down again, but I, I could, but I haven't spent the time. Anyway, uh, the idea was that he was still alive and was very supportive of the whole thing. Uh, but then, about a year and a half ago, a post appeared, ostensibly from JFK Jr., on one of these channels uh, that is frequently frequented uh, by Q, uh, saying, uh, I will be uh, out of circulation for a while, JFK Jr., uh, uh, because I'm mourning the, the recent death of my father, who had a stroke and passed away. Uh, and I loved him very much. And, and he was an inspiration to all of us, but he's no longer with us. But he was for 106 years, apparently. Uh, so here's the guy who's behind all the JFK Jr. stuff. His name is uh, Michael Protzman. Uh, and he, with Q disappearing from the scene, pulling back from the scene, and then this alternate Q, who has really not been accepted by the QAnon community, popping up. Uh, there have been a number of, of players moving in to try to take up the slack to Q influencers who have made a reputation for themselves, interpreting what Q is all about and, 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 uh, and so on. And he was one of them. He died in a motocross accident uh, this summer in July, uh, but not before he had organized two events in Dallas, uh, at great rallies at Dealey Plaza, the site of the assassination, where uh, uh, QAnoners gathered to welcome JFK Jr. back. On both occasions, JFK Jr. unsurprisingly did not show. On the second time, uh, Protzman announced uh, that uh, that his calculations, I'll tell you about his calculations in a moment, uh, indicated that JFK would show up the following night at a Rolling Stones concert. So they all got tickets and went to the Rolling Stones concert. These are people who are selling their houses and so on to travel uh, and follow the, the thread of, of the soon-to-be appearance of JFK Jr. Uh, well, how does Protzman come up with this stuff? Well, it's based on his use of gematria. He is an expert in Kabbalistic numerology, uh, the assignment of numbers and values to letters, uh, and he has analyzed posts of Q and other information to come up with the idea that AJFK Jr. is alive and then that he will appear here and here. So he can always say, 
I, I got the gematria wrong or I, I, I did something wrong. He's always got a, a little fallback. Uh, anyway, uh, these people regard him or regarded him till his death. By the way, many of them believe he is not really dead. Uh, you, it's very hard to be really dead in QAnon world. Uh, but uh, they regarded him as a prophet and as one close to God. And he really fed into that. Uh, so you see here, this is another dynamic. Here is a Q influencer making a bid to be the next Q figure, only to be a public Q figure and one who is lifted up uh, to the Ethereum level. Anyway, yeah, uh, here's uh, just uh, one of the posts that appeared. Uh, this appeared on on Twitter. Uh, JFK Jr. when when Twitter was still there, JFK Jr. to be announced at Dallas's uh, a Dallas rally. And look, they've already designed the poster. You see these posters all around. Trump Kennedy, the best is yet to come. I can top that. Here's the guy that is supposed to be JFK Jr. His name is Vincent Fusca. And he drove around for years in a van plastered with Trump stuff. Uh, and so somehow he got an invitation to a Trump rally where he appeared in that group of people behind Trump and has become now a regular fixture behind Trump at the rallies. So people spotted him and somebody said, that's him. It's clearly, it's clearly JFK Jr. I'm sorry, I, I don't see it myself. Maybe you do. Uh, but Fusca is playing into it when news people, he's surrounded by news people now, when they ask him, so are you really JFK Jr.? He's like, could be, I don't know, what do you think? And he's, uh, you know the old expression, never have to buy another drink, never have to buy another meal. Well, Fusca is, is drinking out and eating out on his JFK Jr. ticket. Uh, and, you know, he's just, he's just a clever idiot. Uh, but his moment in the sun has arrived. Now get this, that's JFK. Uh, and this is the guy I talked about who was honored by Donald Trump in a gathering of veterans. Uh, and the slogan that always appears is, if you know, you know. And you'll notice here that somebody has circled a couple of little blemishes on the photos of JFK and and the, the JFK current version. Uh, and that clearly identifies that these are the same people. It clearly demonstrates. Uh, of course, there's no way you could fake that on, on Photoshop or anything like that. But anyway, uh, that's JFK. Now, in September of, of uh, this year, no, of last year, I'm sorry. In September of last year, Donald Trump uh, made his boldest self-identification with QAnon yet. But the storm is the moment when Trump reveals his plan, uh, uh, the announcement of his intention to dismantle the deep state and end the satanic uh, sex trafficking ring. That's what the storm is all about. And that means uh, it will trigger his return to power because he's out of power now. So when the storm comes, he'll be back in the White House. Who knows how that's going to happen? Will it be by force? Will it be by public acclamation? Uh, and so on. And those who have acted against him, the Clintons, the, uh, the Bidens, the Obamas, the uh, Soros, Gates, all those people uh, will be publicly tried uh, and executed. The, the storm has begun. The dominoes are falling. There's James Comey on the end domino, Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and of course, George Soros. And this is an attractive group of people uh, busily engaged in taking over uh, the taking over the capital. What motivates them? Who are these people that believe all this weird stuff? I've given you an idea of the drivers, uh, cultural confusion, identity crisis, with a, a little bit of oligarch pushing and shoving. Uh, and also, I've identified the themes, the big themes that resonate, uh, anti-science, xenophobia, and, and conspiracism. Uh, but what are the, who are the people that fall for this? Uh, what are their core beliefs? What are their enclaves and what groups are they likely to be found and what are their deepest fears? So once again here, I seem to have fallen into working in threes. Uh, I guess that's the way I'm wired. I see everything in threes. Uh, core beliefs. Number one is white supremacy. Uh, as Casey Kasem would say, white supremacy with a bullet. And Christian nationalism. Christian nationalism. This movement, the QAnon movement, is thoroughly 
evangelical. It, and that should not be surprising. It uh, It's arguable that it did not begin as an evangelical movement, but boy, evangelical Christians, especially the Trumpist evangelical Christians, have really taken to it, taken to it with a vengeance. This is absolutely a Christian nationalist movement now. Now, not everybody is a Christian nationalist, but the themes are, are there. And Mike Johnson, by the way, remember I said he ticks all the boxes? Mike Johnson is the poster boy of Christian nationalism. And male supremacy, it ticks that box as well. Male supremacy, it's not just white supremacy, it's, this is patriarchy writ large. And what are their enclaves? Well, the first one's obvious, they're racist. Uh, dominionists, remember I, I talked about that very toxic, very small, but very, very influential group of, of ultra, ultra violent right-wing Christians. The dominionist movement regularly supplies traveling pastors and preachers uh, to little churches all over the country who would like, you know, the church would like to bring in a guest speaker, but they can't afford to bring in a guest speaker. Say no more. The dominionists have you covered. And we'll give you uh, the former uh, baseball coach who descended into a life of, of depravity and debauchery and drug use and, and finally found the Lord and has come out and wants to tell you about Q. And misogynist, male supremacy. What do you suppose is the enclave we're looking for? Misogynist, people that, that are threatened by women, hate women, and the ultimate, ultimate group or distillation of misogyny is the incels, the involuntary celibates. Interestingly enough, that term incel was coined by a young woman graduate student about 20 years ago uh, who had a, an early website and was, was writing uh, to people who found themselves out of relationships or unable to sustain a relationship. Uh, and it was just a support group come together and uh, we don't plan to be a celibate all our lives, but here we are and and how do we cope with it and so on? What's uh, What do we need to learn? What can we teach each other? And she is apparently completely heartbroken uh, to have this idea that was hers uh, turned into something so poisonous. And what are their fears? For the white supremacists, uh, it's the great replacement. In 2017, the Charlottesville rally uh, that resulted in the in the uh, violent death by automobile of, of one of the counter demonstrators. Uh, but these young people, thugs, were w marching with their torches, their tiki torches purchased that day from Home Depot. Uh, there's a note of authenticity that's somehow lacking. But anyway, uh, marching. And you know what they were chanting? We will not be replaced, and then the Jews will not replace us. The Catholic, I mean, the Christian, no, sorry, the blacks will not replace us, and a long litany of people who won't replace us. The Muslims won't replace us, and the great replacement theory, uh, which actually uh, comes from uh, a, a French philosopher uh, uh, whose name is actually Camus, uh, uh, Marcel Camus, uh, I think that's his first name. Anyway, he was uh, famous. He's in the uh, 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 the French Academy of Science. These people are, are angelic uh, in the view of, of the modern French. Uh, and he was a very famous philosopher and advocate of the gay community. Well, suddenly he turned and began to write about the fact that France was threatened, above all, by the influx of people of color, and especially Muslims, and that they wanted nothing less than to replace the good French citizens with these uh, Algerians and, and Blacks and, and whatever. So he coined the idea of le grand remplacement, the great replacement, uh, and that caught on big time here. Uh, and it uh, has been talked about by uh, probably the number one exponents of it are on Fox News or were on Fox News. Tucker Carlson, number one. Laura Ingram, Laura Ingram, uh, uh, number two. Uh, uh, but Rush Limbaugh talked about it. You know, anyway, uh, the great replacement, that's what they're afraid of. And the war on Christianity. Now, that also was born at Fox News. That was uh, cooked up by Rush Limbaugh that there's a war on Christmas. You know how it's expressed? By people saying, happy holidays. That's the war on Christmas. People are afraid to say, Merry Christmas, uh, as, as Jesus would have said. I hope you realize that Jesus would never have said Merry Christmas. I know you do.
and sexual anarchy. What bothers the, the male supremacist? Sexual anarchy. And again, Mike ticks the boxes. Well, uh, the the riot, the, the insurrection, let's say, the attempt to uh, take over the Capitol and reverse the results of the 2020 election in January of 2021 was organized and planned by the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers. Oath Keepers led by Stuart Rhodes. Uh, Enrique Tarrio here in the middle is the founder and the head honcho of the Proud Boys. Uh, and every single one of these guys, these were the ones that planned it. And did they have help from members of Congress and, and people on the White House staff? And the answer seems to be, uh, the overwhelming evidence seems to suggest yes. Uh, but those are unindicted co-conspirators co-conspirators. Anyway, these all began as QAnon types, although some of them have drifted away. And I just thought you might like to know that these people, you hear about all these four-month sentences and so on. These people are doing hard time. 17 years, 18 years, and Rico got the biggest sentence of four, uh, 22, uh, uh, 10, 15, and Stuart Rhodes doing 18 years. Well-deserved. Well, here's something uh, uh, also to sort of shake your day up. There is a, what I've called here a Michael Flynn, uh, a, a Reawaken America tour with Michael Flynn, COVID quacks, Lynn Wood, remember him? He was the Trump attorney, has since been disbarred, uh, but the Trump attorney that was the the most loosely wrapped of the entire group, just absolutely insane, the things he claimed. Uh, I know it's uh, that's a far reach to say he was the most loosely wrapped. I'm looking at Vanessa. <laughs> anyway, Jim Caviezel, uh, who was Mel Gibson's Christ in The Passion of the Christ, that very controversial film. He had a, a pretty good film career. He played the Count of Monte Cristo recently and uh, seemed to be uh, on heading toward Hollywood stardom uh, or had arrived, uh, but he has become more and more insane and, and talking about uh, uh, more and more insane things. He has become the national spokesman for the adrenochrome conspiracy. And his most recent movie was a blockbuster this summer. It was a blockbuster for a, uh, a brief time before it was wiped out by Barbenheimer, by Barbie and Oppenheimer. Uh, but it was called The Sound of Freedom, and it did astonishingly well. It, it grossed more on the opening day than the, the latest Indiana Jones movie, uh, which I find shocking. But anyway, uh, this road, road show is a Dominionist Christian, QAnon-flavored, pro-Trump medicine show, uh, and it's led by Michael Flynn. Michael Flynn and a pastor, an Oklahoma pastor named Kay, uh, Clay Clark. And the theme? Donald Trump was chosen. There's uh, there's the little poster. I'll blow it up. There's Eric Trump in the middle. Is he as goofy as he looks? Yes, he is. Uh, so they listen They cared up. about being proud election deniers. They hawked fake supplements as cures for COVID. They presented inscrutable flow charts about global banking conspiracies. At one point, they just played an extended clip from Oliver Stone's JFK movie, the 1991 conspiracy film where Kevin Costner proves the Kennedy assassination was a deep state plot by the CIA. That was what happened today on the Reawaken America tour at Donald Trump's Doral Golf Resort in Florida. The event is part of a nationwide speaking tour led by former Trump official and convicted felon Mike Flynn. The featured speakers at that event were Eric Trump and his wife, Laura. Now, earlier this week in this, this very hour of television, my colleague Rachel Maddow reported on this event. She pointed out that among the list of potential speakers were two people who had a history of saying things like this. If you look what happened under the attacks in 911, again, all coming out of the same group of people that has done a very good job at hiding under the religion of Judaism. They use Judaism as a cover for what they're really doing. People are going to learn a lot about World War II and Hitler and the Nazis. They're going to learn about Hitler was actually fighting the same people that we're trying to take down today. That Trump family event was said to include not one, but at least two speakers with a history of transparently anti-Semitic comments. After Rachel pointed that out on her show on Monday of this week, Eric Trump was outraged. He tweeted, Rachel Maddow is walking a fine line. If she or anyone else even remotely suggests I am anti-Semitic, I will not hesitate to take legal action against them personally. Okay, 
Okay, Eric Trump. But then later on this week, it was announced that those two speakers, including the Hitler was fighting the same people we are guy, they were dropped from the event. They would no longer be speaking at Trump's property or sharing a stage with Trump's son. Progress, right? Sort of. For starters, even though they will not be appearing at this event, these two speakers are still on the Reawaken America tour and its lineup for future events, which means that Trump's property is still very much hosting an organization promoting known anti-Semites, even if those precise known anti-Semites will be skipping this particular leg of the tour. It's like seeing a touring production of Cats. And the playbill says that understudies will be playing the parts of Mr. 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 Sophocles and Rum Tum Tugger, my favorite characters from Cats, but the original cast members will be back for the rest of the tour. It's still Cats. Also, for the record, speakers who did not get booted from Trump's property are not without their own controversies, including speakers like a convicted Capitol rioter, a leading promoter of the QAnon and Pizzagate conspiracies, and a doctor who believes that demon sperm and alien DNA are responsible for many of America's health problems. The caravan of right-wing figures who are appearing range with this range from conspiratorial weirdos to outright extremists. And we are now approaching a point where Trump and his family's proximity to these kinds of fringe figures is becoming normal. After all, the president hosted a Holocaust denying white supremacist for dinner at Mar-a-Lago and everybody seems to have just moved on from that. Let me clarify one thing for you right now. That is not the Holocaust denying white supremacist standing with Trump. That's Kanye West, who is, in fact, a Holocaust denier and and likes to pal around with white supremacists unaccountably. Uh, but the guy who was uh, invited to dinner is Nick Fuentes, who is a Hispanic community leader who unaccountably has become a leading voice of white supremacy. Uh, go figure. It's uh, anyway, uh, that's Kanye West, who believes everything. This I, uh, this Reawaken America tour that we talked about, these are some of the backstage scenes at the Re Reawaken America tour. This is a big poster that greeted uh, people coming to the tour. It's like a, a great uh, event. It's like a carnival. Uh, and there are all sorts of peripheral things. I love this poster. You can you can order a copy uh, if you want. This is uh, again, this is available for sale. Just people in the crowd, the MAGA crowd. More tattoos than teeth. Uh, and this is, they always have uh, religious services at these Reawaken America uh, events. And this is, you know, uh, obviously this is evangelical. Uh, and that's the theme. That's the that's what the feeling in the air is. So I got to thinking about the... QAnon fog and the idea that all these conspiracy theories have found a place uh, in the QAnon fog. And so uh, I said I had a little inspiration of crop dusting. Uh, and so this is the QAnon crop duster. And this is just a, a little graphic I put together. Just let it unfold. The Q fog. Anthony Fauci is hated by this group. The steel, the Dominion voting machines that made it possible, the Vatican, the Rothschilds, uh, Islam, of course, the great threat of LGBTQ people, immigration, replacement. When I grew up, BLM meant Bureau of Land Management, but now it's Black Lives Matter. Donald Trump and Jesus, a Christian nation, JFK Jr., Putin is a pal, The Storm, Guantanamo, and The Great Awakening. Now, let me just run back here before we move. Wait a minute. Notice lizards there. A very, I know it's hard to believe, a very significant fraction of the QAnoners believe that the leadership of the cabal is not even human. They are aliens, and they're not even humanoid aliens. They are reptilians. They are lizard people. Now, 
maybe you're thinking about what could possibly be the source of that if you're remembering a 1980s television show called V, <laughs> in which Jane Badler played Diana, the leader of, of these uh, visitors from space who came bearing gifts and technology and every blessing uh, that they could bestow, but actually came to feed, uh, came to feed on human beings. And they were indeed lizards. That's where this comes from. And the adrenochrome idea uh, comes, uh, we won't have time to get into this, but there's a, a wonderful recording you can find of an interview with Terry Gross uh, and uh, and Will Summer. And you can just Google that, Terry Gross interview, Will Summer, S-O-M-M-E-R. And on that interview, they talk about adrenochrome and, and uh, its connection to the blood libel, uh, which maybe you're thinking about already. Uh, but the the source of the idea that adrenochrome is this wonder drug is Hunter Thompson, fear and loathing in Las Vegas, you know, as he was covering one of the great presidential uh, nominating uh, camp, uh, conventions, he took in Las Vegas, he took every drug he could find and he says to his sidekick, I want to try this adrenochrome, it's supposed to be fabulous. And the guy says, you can only get that from pedophiles. Now, it was made up Hunter Thompson just created that and it took it took anyway so this is really important uh his truth social account is now filled with q stuff uh, uh trump appears uh, with uh, he's posting this stuff he appears with q anon banners in the background uh but uh he stopped concealing his support with a, a post that has now become legendary in Q world, they all take it as a blessing from from the man. Uh, but it's it's really Trump coming out of the uh, out of the closet about QAnon, and this is what they call on his website Truth Social. It's called a retruth. On Twitter, it was called a retweet. Uh, somebody sends you a tweet that you like, and you want to send it out to your crowd, so you retweet it. Well, Trump retweeted somebody sent him this it's trump with a q button on his lapel and an american flag and underneath wwg1 wga and the storm is coming somebody sent that to trump he loved it and he retruthed it to his million plus followers so it's pretty definitive and this will be our end when the world realizes the truth the Great Awakening Worldwide. Seems, strikes me that that cue is a little bloody there. The Great Awakening. WWG1, WGA, trust the plan. Well, there's lots more I could talk about, but I've come right to the point where I said I would quit. So I will. And I hope that you've got questions. Okay. Well, you've given a, us a lot to think about. Um, you can raise your hand or put it in the um, in the chat. And uh, I'm going to just see if I can see everybody. Um, you know, we're the general election. We're a year out. Exactly. Um, how do you think <clears throat> this is going to affect the general election? Well, I think uh, that the people who have swallowed the Q Kool-Aid, uh, I don't think QAnon is is rounding up new converts uh, to Donald Trump. I think these are all people that were already in, in the bag, uh, pretty much. So uh, I don't think it's going to skew the electoral map. Uh, but the the one thing, of course, that, that people that study this kind of stuff are always concerned about is the motivation. Motiv motivating people to vote. And here, uh, it's been suggested that the whole QAnon fantasy may work against uh, the right wing, may work against uh, the Trump's candidacy, because part and parcel of it is that you can't trust elections, that elections are all rigged, uh, that elections are all sk uh, skewed, Democrats really control. Why would you want, uh, why would you want to vote? And so I think that that, that could possibly uh, figure in. Somebody just asked the question, how large is the QAnon group? It's really hard to uh, do any accurate polling on this, but uh, Will Summer and others 
uh, uh, estimate that it's in the millions. Uh, but how many millions? I couldn't tell you. I don't think anybody knows. Uh, the other thing is this, that QAnon, there are all sorts of people. I talked about Mike Johnson, and I said he ticked every box. So in a sense, I'm saying he's drunk the Kool-Aid. Well, but he has no connection. He would insist he has no connection to QAnon. That may be true. Uh, but the whole fog of QAnon that has has uh, become so persuasive, the whole connection of, uh, or the whole collection of interdependent conspiracies, that's really important, interdependent conspiracies. Remember I said, maybe you believe uh, something about Marilyn Monroe, but somehow if the Marilyn Monroe conspiracy is part of your, your belief structure, it's because it fits with everything else. Somehow there's a there's a, a network of connections that links it to uh, links it to JFK and so on. So I, I just got another one. Let me open the chat window so I can see those permanently. They pop. Right. And they um, so you look at that. How do you, you can look at that? We also have somebody with their hand up. Mark, go ahead. Hi, Jim. Thank you very much. Uh, Hi. Question Sorry. for oh, you. There you are. Hi. Hi. RFK Jr. is doing relatively well in the polls, which is about twenty percent. What do you think is causing that? Uh, I think that um, um, RFK is is sort of feeling uh, feeding off. He's he's uh, drafting on the QAnon movement. The uh, his core uh, thing is the anti-vax movement, mm -hmm. and you know the the anti-vax movement traces back to a guy, a British physician, who published a study uh, uh, way back. I mean, this may be now, golly, maybe ten years ago published a study that linked uh, childhood vaccinations to early onset autism. Yeah. And uh, it was published in Lancet, which is the Journal of the British Medical Association. Well, nobody could replicate the study. And several people tried. And eventually there was an investigation and the story was pulled from Lancet. And he eventually was uh, defrocked or de-docked or whatever they do when, uh, when you're a discredited doctor. He, of course, without missing a beat, moved to Sedona, Arizona and hung out a different kind of shingle. Uh, and he's still out there feeding this, well, Jenny McCarthy uh, and her husband, Jim Carrey, uh, Hollywood B-list luminaries, uh, picked up on this. She had an autistic son and they started uh, pumping it out. Uh, and, and pretty soon it had taken Hollywood by storm and uh, California since then has experienced a huge uptick uh, in, oh, uh, measles and rubella and so on that would have been dealt with by childhood vaccination. So there's a huge anti-vax community out there, uh, uh, anti-science, I mean, un unscientific. But here comes COVID uh, and there's a, a, a whole phalanx of people saying, these vaccines are not properly tested. These vaccines will kill you and, and so on. This is the same group that says, and by the way, if you wear a mask, it just keeps the germs in. You know, you can't even have a conversation. But uh, so RFK is uh, he's drafting on that. Well, QAnon has has been after the, the vaccine thing, uh, full swing. COVID has been one of the major themes that Q posted about and that the QAnoners have have run with. So he's picking up on that. That's why I think if uh, people think, uh, well, he's running as Democrat or his background is uh, Democrat, uh, he'll hurt Biden. No, uh, he's not going to take votes away from Biden. He's going to take votes away from Trump, I think. Uh, but it, it is hard hope. to believe. Did you say um, we can only hope? Yeah. yeah um, there's a lot of hope involved here. Yes. Um, listen, the I vaccine just, thing, <clears throat> the Haredi, the ultra-Orthodox, they had outbreaks of measles. Because of that same report, autism right, is right. a big thing. Um, right. Bill Rosen wants to know, how do you explain uh, evangelical love of Israel with QAnon anti-Semitism? Yeah, isn't that interesting? Uh, there are all sorts of contradictory things uh, that, that don't seem to trouble these people. Uh, but and I, I could spend we could spend another whole hour and a half uh, just tracking down the contradictory things. But the evangelical love of, of Israel goes way back. Uh, and it goes back to uh, Billy Graham used to talk about it all the time and and so on. Uh, and the idea is that uh, the second coming of Jesus uh, 
depends on, uh, and there's a whole theology that has been created in the evangelical church, uh, a whole theology of the second coming, the return of Jesus, that won't be possible until Israel is fully reconstituted. Uh, and that means the rebuilding of the temple. Now, this is not biblical exactly. It's just grown up in the evangelical community. Uh, but it's very solidly established among evangelicals. So, and uh, evangelicals are among the uh, the first people that would say, "Oh, I'm not anti-Semitic at all. Uh, I just I'm waiting for my Jewish brothers and sisters to to see the light, you know, and come over uh, to the winning team, come over to uh, the Christian side." Uh, and that's a big part of the of the second coming philosophy that the Jews will convert. Uh, and that will be the final uh, the final step before Jesus can can return. So uh, QAnon anti-Semitism, uh, it's there's always been a, a sort of anti-Semitism in the evangelical community, uh, but they would tell you it's not really anti-Semitism. It's anti-Judaism. We're we're concerned about your clinging to uh, a, a religion and a revelation uh, that was a valid revelation, but now has been uh, replaced. It's they call it replacement theology. Here comes Christianity. Thank you for your trouble, Judaism, but your services will no longer be needed. That's a, an evangelical point of view. And they would insist to you that there's nothing uh, anti-Semitic about that. Absolutely. They kept coming to Israel during the Intifada. And it'll be interesting to see. A lot of people usually go during Christmas. I don't know what's going to be in Israel at Christmas time. But um, all right, Ryan, I'm going to unmute you. Let me just first of all quickly yeah. answer Marsha. Uh, and yeah. Marsha suggested that the Camus I was looking for is Albert. And I don't want to leave that. It's not Albert. No connection to Albert. This guy is still alive. His name is Rene. I finally Rene did, uh, remembered his name. Rene Camus. Yes. Ryan. Ryan, Ryan go ahead. Hi. Uh, th this is one of those phenomena that it's it's touches so many different things. It's sort of hard to kind of sum it up and, and, and give really? a coherent, because it's not coherent in itself. I was wondering what you think from obviously you have a handle on on QAnon as a as a contemporary phenomenon, but also as an example of just conspiracism more generally. What yeah. do you think it is about QAnon's conspiracism that has allowed it to because if you once you get into it, you discover it ties into all these other conspiracists like the Masons, right? The Masons, uh, the lizard people as the ones who are the elite to control everything i would submit that's not the i would say actually it's a guy named david ike who was a like a ufo alien kind of person yeah. in England. anyway a preacher but it ties up all these other conspiracist things that have been going on the last 50 years or whatever what do you think it is about QAnon that has allowed it to i mean it almost cannibalizes and consumes all these other conspiracist things that have been going on is it just that we are in a a situation right now where we're so networked and hyper connected and the this um the the realm kind of where all the conspiracist things sort of hang out is just hyper charged and it was a available is it because that's sort of what religiosity is right now that it's just syncretistic and it's always putting together cobbling little bits of other religions together I, um i would say that about you and You've touched on some things that I think really do matter. Number one is the hyperconnectivity, the social media. I mean, everything is adjacent to everything else yep. for the first time ever. But I also think that there's something at work in QAnon theory that, uh, or in QAnon theory, it's not it's not even a theory of the movement, you know what I mean, uh, that has always been there from the beginning and is still there. And that's this connection to game world. Now, I don't mean that all the QAnoners today are gamers, but the core group uh, and the group that fed into it and the group that laid the groundwork, they were hardcore gamers. Uh, and remember I said, we've well, got a pretty good idea who number one and number two Qs were, and they're totally plugged into uh, to game world. And I think what they've done is create a, a structure, partly accidental, partly deliberate, that's really appealing to people. You get into it and you start making the connections just as you would if you were playing Legend of Zelda. You know, if you put this piece together with that piece and you can go to level two and then you can go to level three. And one thing about QAnoners is that they are really eager to tell you how advanced they are. 
They really want to want you to know how many followers they have, how many clues they've deciphered, uh, how how much they understand, how lofty their vantage point is compared to yours. I know something you don't know, even within the whole thing. So I think there's a really I've been thinking about this and I haven't begun to crack it yet. But there's something really important about the allure of a really good, really complicated game. Um, I, I I know we have to wrap up soon. <clears throat> and um, I think Susan Wellick said it. Great. If their theories weren't so scary, they'd be laughable. Nuts, all of them. But there is, first of all, I, <laughs> I think I totally we need agree. to. <laughs> right. We need to be informed. Jim, you informed us this morning. Um, I'm going to be looking for Brian Summer on MSNBC. And maybe Will. Google Will. Will Summer. Will. Will Summer. Will Summer. Um, and Google him and just to see <laughs> what he has to say. Um Do see if you can find the interview with Terry Gross. Okay. Uh, on uh, you know, NPR. Uh, That's it's really good. good. Terry Gross and Will Summer, S O M M E R. Um and um, you have so much more to tell us. I'll be in touch for you to come back in the spring <laughs> as we get we inch closer to the election. Um, and there's just so much that we need to take on as citizens to learn about this. Um, I know our Tikkun Olam uh, committee will have ways for us to get people to register to vote. And you'll be we'll be in touch with everybody. So what a great morning. I have a lot. My my head is, you know, full and bursting. Uh, we have a lot to think about. Thanks very much. Thanks, and thanks Jim. to Susan, thank who you, really thank did you. sum it up nicely. See you. Bye.